Tom, it's Be a Kid Day. What do you miss about being a kid uh, relative to your – how old are you now? 50? <laughs> um, I'm in my 50s. Okay, mm-hmm. he's going to leave it there. <laughs> what do you miss about being a kid, Tom? Well, when I was a kid, the cartoons weren't on all the time. It was just Saturday morning. Tommy could probably relate. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we'd get up on Saturday, and I remember – one day, I was watching cartoons, and I would I would make toast with butter on it, and then I would dip the toast in my cereal. And I remember thinking one day, I'm never going to stop eating toast dipped in cereal. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> and, of course, I stopped probably when I was about 12 years old. But I don't know. I miss a lot of different things, uh, you know some of the touring we did and things like that, but eh, it's been a while. Well, I think, uh, Tom, not necessarily being a kid, but a lot of Arkansas fans miss winning these past couple years, and you got mm-hmm. a little taste and a glimpse of that, and the three wins last year could have had four, five, or six. When you look at this football schedule in 2021, Josh paid 24-7 sports labeled out every swing game for the SEC teams this year. Tom, in your opinion, what do you think the biggest swing game is for Razorback football this season? I think they have several swing games. Uh, the Texas A&M game, which, you know, you can say, well, they weren't really in last year's game because they, they couldn't, you know, hold their spot in that shootout. But when you look at the, the losing streak they have to the Aggies, so many of those could have gone the other way. And I don't think Arkansas should ever feel like it's you know it doesn't have a chance to, to beat Texas A&M, and I'm sure Sam Pittman and and this roster and, and the coaching staff are going to be up and ready to play that game after last year, and because of this long losing streak. But I also think the Texas game is huge, even though it's non-conference. Mm-hmm. They can really kind of set a marker down on you know Razorback football. Pay attention yeah. if they can win in week two, yeah. and so. Um, in my view, so many of the SEC games could go either way. It's just like last year. You know, here's a, here's a program that was basically on the deck, uh, the, the bottom of the rung. They lost at home to Vanderbilt in 2018, hadn't won a conference game in two years, and not only do they win three, but and a couple of those were could have gone either way type games, but the Auburn game should have belonged to them, as we all know. The LSU game could have and the Missouri game could have. They could have been like the story of the year if they had gone six and four last year. I'm gonna make a case for the Auburn game being the swing game, and and here's why: you look at where it falls in the schedule. Um, you know, the the previous three games is A and M, Georgia, and Ole Miss. All games you you not expecting Arkansas to be a favorite, and let's be honest, A and M or in Georgia are games that you would expect Arkansas at this point to probably come up on the short end of. Ole Miss a little more of a toss up game, but you. Uh, you got to play that one down in Oxford. You come back home yep. for Auburn. You could be on a three-game skid uh, in in conference play. There, that Auburn game back at home could be a could be a game that you really need to get well on. I, I think that Auburn game could be a a swing game for a lot of reasons. That's more of a fifty-fifty game, I think, in a lot of people's mind. I'll make a case this morning that the Auburn game might be the biggest swing game just because of where it falls in the schedule. Yeah, that's a great point, Tommy, and and. The SEC schedule makers, I, I'm, I'm still a little bit miffed over what happened last year, and I know that that Hunter Juracek and Sam Pittman put a brave face on it, but they they got they got run over the coals on that deal, getting a game at Georgia, knowing that you're going to play, or excuse me, getting a game against Georgia, knowing that you had a game at Georgia the following year. Yeah. To me, South Carolina, Kentucky, Vanderbilt made a whole lot more sense for the Razorbacks, but anyway. Yeah, you make a great point that, um, you know, if you lose that game, yeah, it could be a, a four-game streak kind of a deal. But I just have a feeling with that first-year coaching staff last year, the way they infused belief in the team that they could go in and, and, and hang. And even though they lost the games to Florida and A&M, they did some, some things in that game. They were not completely outclassed. So. Um, and and then they took it on the chin with the officiating in the Auburn game. Mm-hmm. But, like uh, that game being at home, mm-hmm. when when Bobby Petrino got here, beating Auburn 
became a thing, and, and they did it. Um, they did it in um, all those odd numbered years, I guess, during the Petrino era, 9, 11, and so on. So, uh, yeah, that game could be a could, could be complete. Really, when you consider that it's a new staff of Brian Harson mm-hmm. um, and a quarterback who he Bo Nix will probably make some good strides this year, but still can be uh, mistake prone, and and I think the Razorbacks need to get that one at home. And consider this: Auburn has LSU and Auburn, the two games leading up to Arkansas, so uh, it, it may set set up well just because of where it falls in the schedule. And I, I think you're right about the fact that I think Sam Pittman can play up with this team. Hey, you beat these guys last year. It counted everywhere but the record books. You owe them one this year on your home field. I think that's a game you can – there's only so many spots in the schedule, Tom, you can really get your team to that magic level. Maybe that's one of those weeks where you can can really emotionally get your team to that magic level. I agree. It's hard to, to get it up every week and, um, and get ready to take on tough opponents. And I think the Auburn game will fall into that category this year. Yeah, and with that Auburn game, Tommy, you just brought it up. I mean, they got to play Georgia the week before, mm-hmm. which is the probably either second or third best team in the Southeastern Conference this year with yeah. maybe the first or second best quarterback. Yeah, and that's a big rivalry game for both of those South's guys. South's oldest rivalry. Yeah. I mean, that's their – I would I would say it's Florida for Georgia and it's Auburn – or excuse me, it's Alabama for Auburn, and then both teams have the, the second slot. Yep. So coming off that game, Tom, you remember when – Arkansas had with Brett Bielema and those fellas, and it seemed like that every team that played Arkansas the week after they play horrible or they just lose the following week. I mean, I could see based on the emotion side that you just brought up and based on just how talented and physical the Georgia team is that Auburn comes to Fayetteville just beaten and, and barren heading into that football game. Yeah, it kind of depends on how they perform in that game. You're right. But I'll tell you, we're also – Arkansas has got – a standard to get to that, you know, with a new quarterback, I mean, I know that I know it's a a veteran line, but they're going to have to play better. They're going to have to get a better pass rush. They got to find a defensive end, Dorian Gerald and some other people, Zach Williams and Mattel Soli. Some guys have got to find ways to get to quarterbacks um, because the teams that had time because Arkansas couldn't generate a pass rush are the ones that Arkansas hardly stopped from scoring. And I'm talking about Florida A. Florida, A&M, Alabama, they can hardly stop those teams from scoring. Yeah, the, that's the question mark, I think, on this football team that looms large. I'm not as concerned, Tom, about the offensive line, but the defensive line to me and you, Clay, and others could probably um, dissect it more than I can. But if you had to pinpoint one question mark on this football team in 2021, would that be the biggest I think so, and they they know it's a liability, and and I do think that this coaching staff concocts ways to you know make improvements, and I think they're going to find ways that that, that they're going to improve the pass rush. Now, will it be an asset? That that would be a reach to think that they could turn it into a big uh, a negative into a, a, an asset over one year. But um, they've recruited really well on the on the back end, and so maybe if they cover better. That improves your pass rush as well, because mm-hmm. um, you know we saw Kellen Mond, a guy who likes to run. I think he ran one time, and you know had a nice run, converted third down out of it, I believe. But otherwise, he just sat in the pocket and picked Arkansas apart. At you all. know, throwing to the tight end, and 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 obviously uh, teams went to their tight ends against the Razorbacks. Yeah. So, yep, yeah, um, got to find a way, even if it's sending the linebackers, even if it's sending corners, whatever different blitzes got to find a way to impact the QB and I was talking to Clay on the phone a couple of days ago and it reminded me you know those graduate transfers uh was it Trey Williams and uh Utsi and Ridgeway um yeah, yeah. We, we forget about those guys because you didn't see them in spring and uh they're coming you, you forget about those guys being in the mix up front too and how that's going to change the complexion and the rotations as well on that defensive front and you hope that you know they're more impactful than maybe a, a Xavier Kelly uh, and have more of an impact on your, your defensive front than what we saw him have. So. Absolutely. And there's a chance. Those guys put up numbers at their previous stops. And, um, you know, Utsi should be should be a, a great addition. Uh, you know, a home state kid. And he's gotten it done in the SEC before. So uh, even though they're mostly tackles out of that bunch, uh, 
just holding guys up, letting other guys be free is a key thing too. And every once in a while you'll have a Jonathan Marshall, a swim move or something, bull bull rush and and then boom, they're in the backfield making plays. So yeah. hopefully Arkansas gets a handful of those this year and um and their DNs find ways to to make moves and, and get to the quarterback. Yeah. Be interesting to see, you know, um, a guy like Dorian Gerald, whether he can rise to a starting spot this year, stay healthy. I, I know Clay and you guys in the uh, the depth chart he had out post spring had had him behind Eric Gregory. So uh, you know, I'm interested to see how that that front three or four, depending on the scheme, ends up working out. And some of these more experienced players like a Dorian Gerald, um, you know, can he finally have that kind of year? And I'm kind of zeroed in on him just because of his experience or, his, or or what should be experience, whether or not that that will pan out this year. Absolutely. I mean, he had some monster stats in junior college and, you know, between the neck deal and mm. various other injuries, he just hasn't been fully healthy. And I would think that the, the push from other guys like Gregory and these new newcomers that Dorian would feel that and, and, and perform better as a healthy guy and, and, and show what, you know, why he was able to amass the numbers he did as a younger player. Tom, before we let you go, Muss is on, or I think he just exited an interview with Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin talking about NLI stuff. We had Jalen Tate on yesterday. It was a fantastic conversation. And we asked him about the pressure that's facing this team upcoming. I know we've been really honed in on football talk as of late. Baseball took up the majority of our conversation. But Tommy brought it up yesterday. There's going to be a lot of expectation for this basketball team. How excited do you think fans will be once November rolls around and this team starts playing basketball again? Oh, they're going to be jacked up. I mean, the way they finished last season, um, Arkansas basketball hasn't been able to witness something like that. And shoot, how long has it been, Tommy? Yeah, it's, it's been 96 since they made the final, uh, the Sweet 16. So, um, yeah. you know, so, I mean, you know, 25 years, you know. It, it is. And, and, I don't know. There's something about the way most coaches, and even though he lost um, a good number of his assistant coaches, I think they they're they're great at, at finding matchups. They're great at in-game um, maneuvers. Uh, they they scout teams as, as well as I've seen any team in this country, and um, and they they're masters at working the portal and and getting junior guys college guys in here yeah. and uh yeah boy we're gonna miss Jalen tate for sure and moses but uh and and justin smith but i think um these young guys devo and kk Jalen williams those guys are are gonna you know try to maintain the the mark that that they got going last year and, and they're gonna be fun to watch I, I i don't see any reason why they should fall off near yeah. the the top segment of the SEC. Yeah, and the point I was making is even with a successful or beyond expectations football season, people are still going to be talking about basketball in late October and November. And if, if football doesn't meet expectations, they're really going to be talking a lot more about <laughs> basketball in November. <laughs> kind of like in the 90s when Nolan had it rolling and football wasn't so great, basketball dominated the conversations in, uh, yeah. in October and November. Absolutely, and they scored a, a good number of points in the NACDA, the NACDA Athletic Directors Cup, and uh, I'm sure y'all have talked about it some. But eighth place, eighth place finish, best ever. It was an all around great year in so many different sports. It, it football scored because it, you know, it qualified for a bowl game. But uh, the University of Arkansas Athletic Department had it going on in 2020, 21, and uh, so. Let's see if they can uh, even come close to matching that this coming season. I get football on that level. So, Tom, thanks for your That's time. Right. Uh, we'll talk to you early next week. Sounds good, guys. Take care.